Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about discriminant analysis in R. The other name of discriminant analysis function is Fisher Linear Discriminant Analysis given after Fisher 1936. We are very much aware that in case of regression analysis our dependent variable is continuous. But when we talk about discriminant analysis our target variable our dependent variable is in category. So if we uh, assign the groups 1 and 2 in case of regression analysis to the dependent variable we are going to get the same result as that of discriminant analysis basically it is a classification techniques it is exactly opposite of ANOVA in case of ANOVA we are having a dependent variable which is continuous and uh, the independent variables are categorical here we are having the dependent variable as category and other variables are continuous. There are some strong assumptions which we have to follow while we are while carrying out this discriminant analysis. First assumption is multicollinearity. If two explanatory variables are highly correlated, then it can decrease the prediction power. Homogeneity of the variances. If the variances among two groups are equal, then we will use linear discriminant analysis and if they are not equal then we will use a quadratic discriminant analysis. To check the variances among the groups we are using box M statistics. The third assumption is that the observation should be independent of each other. The multivariate normality assumption is that the uh, variable should be following the multivariate normality. This is also again tested with the help of box M statistics. If we don't achieve normality then then also the discriminant analysis has been made so robust then it can work effectively. Discriminant analysis is quite sensitive to outliers and therefore we prefer large sample size. What is the difference between discriminant analysis and logistic regression is that in case of logistic regression our dependent variable can only have two categories yes no urban rural male female literate illiterate while in case of discriminant analysis we can go for more than two categories high income medium income low income discriminant analysis strictly follows the rule of so st strictly follows the assumption of multivariate normality and the vari equal variances among the group in case of logistic regression we don't require multivariate normality the discriminant analysis is considered to be the parametric analysis logistic regression is considered to be the non parametric analysis the interpretation of discriminant analysis is quite tough while case of logistic regression it's little bit easy. Log uh, researchers prefer logistic regression as we, as we can uh, form the equation and it is similar to linear regression. While researchers don't prefer discriminant analysis in comparison to logistic regression. Now the algorithm will run Wilkie's lambda or it will compute the Wilkie's lambda statistics. The ideal value of this should be equal to zero. It means that those variables whose Wilkie's lambda is equal to zero, these variables are significantly contributing in discriminating the groups. We don't have to calculate, uh, rather the software will calculate the p-value for each and every variable. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we can say that this variable is significantly contributing towards the predicting the group member set. The next statistics which is generated is the Mahalomides distance. So for classification of the groups in multivariate space, it is necessary to compute the location of the points. There are means for all the variables identified as or defined as a group centroids. So the means will be calculated which are basically the centroids. Now any new point and its distance with the centroid is considered to be the probability and the probability that a point belongs to a particular group from from the group centroid is basically proportional to the Mahalobides distance. These probabilities are called the posterior probabilities as they are based on our understanding that a particular case belongs to which group. Two probabilities were there prior and posterior. In case of prior we have not assigned any model to the data. While in case of posterior probabilities, we have assigned the model to the data and then we will do the comparisons. We will be using the uh, famous iris flower data set which is 
given default in R. Now we will run the discriminant analysis on a very, uh, you can say, popular data set that is a iris data set. First of all, let us see this data set, iris data set. We are having petal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the species are there. The species are Cetosa, Versicola, and Virginica. So we want to use the classification technique on the basis of this variables 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we want to classify the species. We'll activate the library, mass function, because in this we are having a linear discriminant analysis command. I will activate it. I will attach iris data set. Now, first of all, I will have to drop the target variable from our data frame. And for this, I will be using x as dot matrix command line, sorry, uh, the round bracket iris minus 5. This data manipulation technique I already discussed in my previous videos which are available on R. Kindly refer my previous playlist. You can see the target, target variable has been dropped from our data frame. Now first of all we will activate the MANOVA. So I will specify iris.pillay MANOVA x the data frame dollar iris dollar spaces I will run. Once the MANOVA is activated what I will do is this iris.manova I will feed in this Wilkes, Wilkes test. So I will write iris.wilkes summary iris.manova test is Wilkes and I will get the p-value. This Wilkes test is exactly like carrying out ANOVA in regression analysis. Here the p-value is less than 0 0.05 which means that we reject the null hypothesis which means that discriminant model exists for this data set and can be really helpful in classifying the species. Now we will run the model LDA1, LDA, species, dollar, all the independent variables. I will run it LDA1. Now I will get uh, four outcomes 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let us understand this thing one by one. The first part of the output consists of the model that is fitted, this one. The second one is the prior probabilities. The prior probabilities means very simple. When you toss a coin, you get heads and tails, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So when I am not assigning any model to this data frame, what is the probability that the species is Setosa, 0.33, Versicolor, 0.33, Virginica, 0.33. Equal probabilities are there. Then the group means are calculated that are centroids. Now, why we are calculating this thing? The simple thing is, see, if the difference is large between these centroids, this variable will significantly contribute in discriminating. If the centroid function is nearer to each other, then, and then this variable will not contribute significantly in discriminating. Then there is a formation of LD1, LD2, and the LD1 equation has the explanatory power of 0.99. It is like how much variance we are able to explain. Now, this is exactly like a principal component analysis in which the first factor explanatory power, the second factor explanatory power and third factor explanatory power. How many linear discriminant uh, function it will create? If there are three groups, minus one, two will be created. If there are two groups, minus one, one group will be created. So here you can see that the discriminant one explains 99.1 two percentage of the variance and the remainder is explained by LD2. What equation we are forming? Let's see. LD1 0 0.829 into sepal length, 1.53 into sepal width, minus 2.81 into petal width, minus 2.20 into petal length. You can see here this we have formed. Is it clear? Now once, now once this is done, the next thing is to predict that on, on the basis of this function, what should be the predict or rather what should be the species? I am not working here on the raw data now. Based on the available observation, this observation, be very careful, listen to me very carefully. See, now I will use LDA1 and now I will predict, this is actual, 
but on the basis of the model I will predict and I'll take this data set that what should be the species. For this I'll be using the predict command line. Now this predict is available in the mass package. Basically it allows to apply this function on the same data to test the success of the classification function. On the basis of the given model the predict function assigns classification of each samples. The summation of all the posterior probabilities of each sample to each group is equal to 1. Let's carry out this analysis. What is the command line? Predict LDA1, the model, new data is equal to iris C1234 dollar class, run it and LDA.p I will get. Now this is the prediction which we have got. Now I will plot LDA1. On right hand side you can see the setosa has been classified or discriminated very successfully but there is some overlapping which is happening in versicolor and virginica. Same thing I can get it on the histograms also plot LDA1 dimension is equal to 1 type both and you can see again setosa has been classified very accurately. Versicolor there is some overlapping which has happened between virginica and versicolor. Now there is one package which is known as KLR. It will directly give you the classification. Activate the library KLR and in that party mart command is there. Party mart species dollar dot data is equal to iris method is LDA. Now this, this is a method. It is not the equation which we have formed here. It is not the equation, right? It is a method. I'll run it. On right hand side you can see that it will give me the combination of all the variables separate sepal length compared with sepal width sepal length compared with petal length pet, sepal width compared with petal length the overlapping should be very much less now you can see here there is too much overlapping which is happening here and therefore the classification is not accurate now we want to see where the misclassification has occurred so for this we will do the cross tabulation that is we will cross tabulated cross tabulation will be done between the predicted membership and the actual membership so once a model is created using explanatory variable our next step is to assess the effectiveness of this analysis and this is done by comparing the uh, observations by predict to the actual observation by convention, it is also called, known as a confusion matrix in which actual species and predicted species both are cross tabulated. How we can do here? Very simple. CT1 table. Table is a command line. LDA.p, our predicted function which we have, which we have uh, calculated. Iris $5, only the target variable. I'll run it. CTA1 and I'll see that Setosa has been accurately classified. This is the raw data original data and this is the according to the predicted model. So 50 observations of Setosa has been classified accurately. But in case of versicolor, you can see there is a misclassification which has happened. According to the raw data, 48 observations are such that raw data is saying it is 48 and the model is saying it is versicolor. So 48 observations are correct. But two are misclassified. According to the raw data, it is versicolor but according to the model it is virginica similarly in case of virginica the raw data is saying it is virginica but the model is saying it's a versicolor so three misclassification has happened now our next step is to find out where the misclassification has occurred so i'll say actual iris dollar species actual predicted lda dollar species now I'll say, is the misclassification there or not? I'll use a logical operator, exclamation equal to, actual exclamation equal to, please compare. Is the misclassification there? Is dollar miss? So, <clears throat> now what does this give me? Let's try to understand. There are 12 observations in first row. 
the this is 13th number observation now you will have to see where you have get getting true it means that the misclassification has occurred so there is an observation which is 84 then there is an observation which is at uh, here where misclassification has occurred and here the observation number 134 these are the observation where misclassification has occurred but i want to find out directly that please tell me where the misclassification has occurred and that for that i will convert this thing into the character a s dot character actual is and uh, is miss this one i am giving this i will run it similarly i will do it for predicted so as dot character predicted is miss now i will uh, give the uh, i'll assign the posterior probabilities what are the posterior probabilities so i'll be using p as dot data dot frame round predict lda1 dollar posterior is miss comma 4 and then i'll run it and please give me the summary of this p which is the output from here and compare actual and predicted so i'll get the observation number 71 84 and 135 which are misclassified so this is all about discriminant analysis in r you can find uh, you can find all this uh, codes available in my book which is available on amazon as well as amazon.in amazon.com this book data analysis using r it is available on amazon.in as well as amazon.com kindly subscribe to my channel you can follow me on linkedin and twitter